a nice piece of rough torn cherry with two cherry filled cracks. Right, I rough torn this a while ago and uh, with it being cherry, of course it has cracked as cherry seems to do 90% of the time I'd say when I'm doing cherry I get one in maybe eight, possibly ten that don't crack so cherry is one of the woods that I don't worry about cracking anymore if it cracks, it cracks, if it doesn't, it doesn't, I'll just fill it with resin um, there's a couple of woods that I do that with because of the odds of it cracking. It's just, uh, it can be very frustrating when you rough torn something and it cracks constantly. So you've got to get to the mindset at some stage where if it cracks, it cracks. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And if it cracks, deal with it then. Right? Uh, so what I've done is I have filled where it cracked with uh red resin right we get the torn in this now this is quite a pretty ball so the first thing i want to do as an arm up is level that warp out of it so we do that and then we'll really get going with the torn on this Right, there's the roughing done. It's back to being circled. As you see, I'm kind of going for a close top on this one, for a close bow. There's a little bit of terror just there. Side bevel cut should get rid of it. Right, and then I want to start shaping that top as well. shape on the top of it right bit more of a curve I think yeah 
Yeah, that's better. I don't know if it's something that's vaguely, very vaguely calabashy shape here, but it is not the calabash. Straighten out that rim, and then we'll sand and finish the outside of this. Sound off in the outside of that, and I'll be back then. All right, time to work. Just put the wax off. Um, right, the reasons that this is not a calabash. Right? Number one, and the main one is, it's got a flat bottom. Right? Calabashes do not have a flat bottom. Right? And number two, do you see the main curve in it there? Right, that's actually too high to be a calabash. This is the way this is just a closed valve. Instead, it's actually it's very pretty. Red slashes turned out very nice. Oh, it's more buffing. Not much, just a bit. Right, now we get on to the interesting part of this is the inside so I'll just move the camera and I'll be back in a sec right I'm trying to get in as close as I can so you can see the tip of the gouge right. Right. so basically just start off as normal get your width right. now the easiest way I found to do on this is don't worry about that dip for the start. Just get away the excess wood. So this is when all the excess wood gone, so I can concentrate on that torn just in there. Right. Till for this is actually the negative brake scraper, but I'm just going to try and get as much as I can done with the gouge first. Get up as close as I can to that. No, that's too close. gouge is sharpened. Right, I hope the camera is picking me up here. I think it should be. Right. The stretch on this is instead of the gouge being here where we normally have it, the stretch for this is out there. Right? Now one of the easiest ways you can lock you can break your wrist and lock your elbow in. Right? Or you can just get used to holding your arm there and just moving your body. Hopefully that picked that up. <laughs> 
Right, now, the camera is actually slightly in my way here, so I'm just going to move it a bit closer. Right, hopefully she'll be out of my way there. Right, I'm using the inside tip of the wing just there. I'm using very light controlled cuts. Because as I said, there's quite a stretch on this. So you don't want it to be trying to take off big bits. Because uh, you don't have the same amount of control. And check it frequently for thickness because everything's gonna feel weird because you're not doing it the way you're used to. thick just there Now I've got to start turning back out from about there. I've got to start turning back out, but I've got to keep that curve in it. So yet again, nibble away the excess wood first. So that all I have to do is concentrate on that curve. I'm not worried about hogging wood away. Now I'm riding here, more towards the tip, so we can get around that corner. If I try and ride it here, I'm going to hit this edge. So I'm riding this part of the bevel here, whereas the first part I was riding here, second part I'm riding here. start going down there move the tool rest slightly so a little bit further yep. now I'm going to be riding in here torn just noise there. there. Check it. 
that it's the curve I'm worried about most here and that's about right yeah that's not bad now we start straightening at the bottom your problem here is gonna be that you can't get the gouge at the angle you think you should have it at because you can't come here without hitting here you're riding basically the wrong bevel you're gonna keep getting slight catches especially if you take too big of a bite right, and you have a huge overhang going as well Tail rest will be dead handy here for doing this. Now we go to the negative ray scraper to clean all that up. Now, as you might be able to see from over there, in here is in an absolute heap at the moment because uh, I got the wood storage shed finished and I'm halfway through moving everything out of here. Uh, in here won't be finished till after Christmas. Because um, to move the lathe, but to move a lot of stuff. Oh, look at that tear up. Right. Push cut. And uh, I've a lot of stuff to move when I move the lead. Uh, I've all the lighting to move, the camera positions, the tools. And I'm just not going to have the time before Christmas to do it. Hi. 
Yeah, that's better. Right. Sand and finish the inside of that. And I'll be back in a minute. Right, just puffing the wax off. You can see there where it curves in and curves back out. It's uh, pretty nice actually. Right. Now the thing you'll notice mostly is, even though the bottom of this is flat, there's no angle there. You can't see an angle there. The curve just follows it. So it's a different kind of bowl. Uh, I did that Japanese one. Um, and what the clothes on. What I'm trying to do is go through a few different kinds of bowls. Because there's the standard bowl that I always do, which <sighs> sells pretty well. I'm trying to make it. Um, I'm trying to give you his options. Now all I gotta do is, yeah, that's cool. No, it's not. So see a finger mark just there. Um. So I'm trying to give you his options for different styles of bowl. You don't have to stick to the same one all the time. Right, now we just flip this over, do the base and we're done. So we'll flip it over and back in a sec. Right, just nibble away the bottom of this. Cherry close top bowl. And the trick with these to make them look right is that curve there. Do not let that go straight. It has to be a curve. So I hope you enjoyed that one. If you liked it, you can click and like on the video. I'll pull up some stills at the end and I'll see you in the next one.